are so thankful, God. Lord, we cry out hallelujah to you, God, for all that you've done for us. You brought us here today. You kept us all this week. You watched over us. Some of us had to drive long distances and you watched over us. You gave us travel and mercy. You've been so good to us, God. And we cry out, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for the goodness that you're doing on today. We're in expectation for you, God. To see other people, but we come to give your name glory. We come to put you first and to worship you. To bring honor and glory to your name, God. And so I pray over the heart, the hearts of every person in here, that we can do just that. We can lift up your name and give you glory and honor. From the babies all the way to the adults, we lift up your name and give you glory and honor. I pray a special prayer, oh God, that you will search our hearts. You know the secret things that lay within our hearts, the things that lay heavy upon our hearts, God. You know. I ask you, God, to search our hearts, Lord. Cleanse us, oh God. Remove the iniquities or any deep, dark secrets that we don't want to be out and exposed. Remove those things from us. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us, God. Heal us, Lord. Only you can do it. If anyone needs a mighty move from God, a miracle from you, God, will you meet them here today? Let your presence and your power just rest heavy in this place so that we can receive from you, God. Use us, Lord. We are your vessels. We want to be used by you, God. But use us so that you can get the glory, so that you can be high and lifted up. We acknowledge you as Lord, as King. We need you, God. We cry out to you, God. We want you, Lord. We want to touch from you, God. We want to feel your presence, God. Because when you step in, things change. At the mention of your name, Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. But when your manifest presence shows up, things change all the more. Some of us need healing. Some of us just need love. Some of us need a hug. Whatever we need, God, we can find it in you. And we're asking you, God, to be what we need. We're asking you, God, to do it on today and every day. God, I pray over every person that has joined us today, the individuals that will join us online, whether they watch the service today or two weeks from now or days from now, Lord, I just pray, God, that your presence will be so powerful that it will flow through the monitors, the screens, and will meet them where they are. I pray, God, that your presence and the Holy Spirit will join them to touch their hearts, provide healing, comfort, and everything that they need. I pray over the visitors that have joined us today. Lord, we rejoice that someone chose to come to this household of faith to hear from you, to hear and receive a word from you, God. And so I just pray, God, that we can show love to our visitors 
our brothers and sisters all over the world, even if we've never met them, we show love to them. Lord, we pray a prayer over any souls that are lost, that are wandering, walking through the streets of Greenville, and that don't know you. And I just pray a prayer that you'll lead them closer to you. Lead them to the church, the body of Christ, that can show, show them who Christ is. That can tell them and preach a gospel of hope, a gospel of love to them. There's a dying world out there. Some of them don't want to know you. Some of them just don't know you exist, God. Will you show up for our for the lost souls? Show up and be present. God, I pray over the pastor that will stand behind the sacred desk and preach your word. I pray over him, his wife, his family, the head of this church, God. I pray, God, that you will lead and guide and direct their paths and don't allow the enemy to get them off track or distract them. When the enemy comes against them, remind them who you are, God. You are strong and mighty to save. Yes. Each of us, God, remind each of us who you are, God. You are strong and mighty. We can run and take refuge in your name. We can stand on the name of God, the name of Jesus. We can trust and believe in who you are, who you've always been, because you never change, you're always the same. And for that, I am so grateful. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do on today in this service. Thank you, Lord for how you're going to use each of us, how you're going to speak to each of us in our own way. Thank you, Lord. I am an expectation. Believe in that you're going to do something miraculous. Believe in that you're going to get the glory. love is going to lead us here, wrap its arms around us and comfort us. God, we lift up holy hands to you. With praise and thanksgiving, we, we, we let all of our requests be made known unto you. We honor you. We're not in a rush, God. We want to settle down in your presence. Because we know that there's power in your presence. And there's something that we need from you. God, will you do it today? Thank you, Lord. We seal this prayer with praise and thanksgiving. With praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The name that's stronger than any name. In Jesus' name we pray. With faith, with, with, with so much faith, not doubting anything. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus, you said in your word, whatever we ask in your name, we will have it. 
So in Jesus' name we pray. We just ask for a few things, God, and we believe that we already have it because we're asking by faith in Jesus' name. We're not doubting anything. We're asking by faith in Jesus' name because we know how powerful your name is, Jesus. We know how mighty your name is, Jesus. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. But I know that the Lord wants to hear the sound of your voice, the music that he gave you. Could you stand to your feet with me for just a few minutes? Hallelujah. Every week I say to myself, Lord, I don't want to have to pump and pry your people to bless your name. And so I feel like I'm just cheerleading us into a place where we can celebrate God for who he is. Would you lift your hands and just in your own way. Just begin to love on your daddy, on your father, on the one that kept you from last week to this week. It didn't have to be so. It didn't have to be that you're even in his house this morning. It could be that we're laid up in a hospital with tubes running from here and there. But God, in his mercy and in his grace, he's kept us in our right mind. We have the activity of our limbs. We can come and go. We can eat what we want to. We don't have to be fed. Hallelujah. And for those things alone, just those natural things, we're grateful. That's not even counting the things that he does behind the scenes that we can't even see. How he is our protector and our provision and he makes ways out of no ways and he shuts doors in the enemy's face and he opens doors that we can walk through. He's so incredibly good. And with you in your own way, for just those reasons, just begin to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, people of God, move your tongue. If you came here to spectate, you came for the wrong reason. We're about lifting up and worshiping the name of God. Would you open your mouth? And bless him. God bless your name. Hallelujah. Bless you. Praise you. We honor you. We bless your name. Come on, somebody help me fill this room with adoration towards our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, reach down. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. We praise you. We adore you. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. That's why right. he dwells in the midst of our praise. And when we get on one accord to bless his holy name, he rushes in and he heals bodies. He heals sickness and disease that you don't even know that's present in your body, in your family. He's working for our good. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody's not ashamed. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. I look around this room and I see the healing hand of God that has touched lives time and time again. How he's eradicated serious diseases that took some people out of here. They don't have the opportunity to walk in a church or walk in anywhere to praise the Lord. But here we are. So God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Just a few more minutes, I'm going to move on. I just don't want to miss an opportunity to bless the name of the great God, the great King, the mighty one, 
the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the everlasting Father, hallelujah, who reigns for eternity, who I'm looking forward to sit with one day and just sit in his face. Oh, oh, oh. That's right, that's right, he sees you. It's an audience of one, it's not a performance. He sees every tear you've cried this week. He's answered every time you were confused. Every time you were troubled. He's been right there. Even in his silence, he's there. And so God, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you too. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We're in no hurry. I came to bless him. I came to lift him up. I came to magnify him and to lavish praise on him. That's what I came for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, one more time. Just lift your hands as high as you can get them. And just a sign of surrender. God, I give you all of me this morning. I'm going to give you the best praise. I'm not going to hold anything back. Uninhibited, undignified. I'm going to bless your name this morning. Because you've been so good, so kind. Not because of me, but because of you. We bless your name. declaration that we're declaring war on the enemy of our souls. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Attacking every way. 
Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him all over the place. Glory to God. How about this? How about this? How about this? For the thing. church mothers used to say Oh, Lord. 
midst of praise. And I know you didn't come all this way just to sit. Man. They heal us here. They deliver us here. Bye. 
If you have your textbooks with you, we're going to be in Genesis. We are finishing up wisdom. God, in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to worship. We thank God for Father Chapman being in town. We thank God for him. How God brings him over to dangerous highways. We thank God for Mother being here and some of my friends. Brother Nate, Brother Brown, we thank God for y'all. Lord God, we thank you. Sam, we are praying for you. I know that you were feeling bad, but I know you are watching on uh, um, Alma Barron. And we thank God for each and every one of you to come to hear the word of God. Come on, Pastor Watch, will you come up and sit with me? said blessed are those to preach the gospel but I want you to think about it you have people's lives in your hand and you are responsible for getting them from earth to glory and they don't always follow but God has told me something Regardless of what they do, they're not rejecting you. They are rejecting me. He said, what I want you to do is pray for them continuously. Fast for them. Keep them on the wall. The danger may stay away. I was just telling the deacon that it sounds like a cliche that things have to get worse before they get better. And the better it is that Jesus is coming. Amen. That's the better it is. And they were talking about how that the Pope has come out and accepted same-sex marriage. All sin is sin. slept right through it. Because you don't know that it didn't rain don't mean it didn't rain. Right? So as I went out to work at 1.30 this 
this morning, it was no visibility. And this is how we live our life. I know I need tires on my car. It's nothing for me to go and get them because I have an account with Firestone. And as a Greenville County employee, we get a discount, 50% discount. Well, y'all, y'all got excited when I was saying <laughs> when I was saying when I was saying the same as blaze. Y'all just said, but I said you can get new tops fifty percent off. Like praise God, bless God. Can I use your discount, Pastor? Praise the living God. That's something you're blessing this morning. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> well, y'all always bring me out of crack, and I was trying to. Be the serene pastor and just for the camera, you know. You know how you just be so smooth and everything. And the Lord said, Yes. But as I'm driving and I'm hitting pockets, I was saying to myself, Deacon, I got to get those tars. This is dangerous. But see, we don't think that until we end the storm. I should have prayed. I should have fasted when God told me to. But we don't think that until we end the storm. Now, at 1 30 this morning, how many of y'all was up? Y'all were probably slobbing, right? Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you was up, yeah. You was up? Can I, can I, I'll tell you later. <laughs> and so the passion to with me was like, Mr. Turner, you need to get some tars. I'm like, yeah. Isn't that just like Satan? I'm not calling the guy Satan, but I'm in the storm, and he's like, yeah, you should have prayed. <laughs> well, you're the one that told me not to pray. You're the one that told me that it'll be all right. I can get a couple more miles out of these things. But as I was driving down the road, shh, shh, I'm talking about I had the windshield wipers on full blast, and I still couldn't see. And I can't hardly see anyway. <laughs> Wig glasses, so I know I was in trouble. So I brought it all the way down. I usually drive 80 wherever I go. I know I repent right now in the name of Jesus. But I brought it all the way down to 40. And I can hear the Lord say, It's time. That's how good our God is. But I'm going to show you something in the Word of God. We've been talking about wisdom. I want each and every one of you to know when you leave this place that God has a purpose for your life. You are not just living just to be living. And a lot of people are in situations and they know they shouldn't be in, but they keep, they keep being in it because they don't want to disappoint somebody else. But we disappoint God all the time. God has told us to do things. This is so awesome because I'm giving you an uplead up to what I'm getting ready to tell you. God has told us to do things, whether it is to leave this or go here, stop talking to this person. But we get affected because we are going to think about what other people think about us. How many of you know that sometimes we care about what other people think rather than what we care about what God thinks? And you can say all you want. I don't care about what people think. See, I know that you're not telling the whole truth because you got to say it with an attitude. Usually, if you're talking about something, you can say it calmly. It, it don't matter to me. One way or other. What they think. But we do care about what people think. But I want to show you in the Word of God. In Genesis, we're going to go all the way back. In Genesis, we've been talking about wisdom. I'm going to give my, uh, I don't have topics. This is a, a study on wisdom this whole month. Can you believe this month is gone? This is the last Sunday. It's gone. That's how we know that time is winding up. The Bible says you will not be able to tell the seasons from one another. When it's supposed to be cold, it's hot. When it's supposed to be hot, it's cold. I'm telling you, get yourself together. The Bible says, search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life. That means because we put our own thing in it and we 
things that we know and we don't know. Listen, I wrote here, it says, we understand that Solomon asked God for wisdom and God gave him everything he needed. Y'all remember me talking about that? And I went through the Bible and I've shown you, and I'm really not finished with this, but I've shown you that wisdom is where we need to be. Uh, before I move on, I want to thank God for our executive pastor doing Bible study last Thursday where I, um, uh, where I am preparing to get the children to come back to school. We are working over putting up plexiglass so the children can social distance and so forth and so on. It's good to have good help. We thank God for each and every one of you. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. It reads like this. So Abraham departed. Um, that screen is too big. The words are all over the screen. That's all right. Don't worry about it right now. I'm already into it. Read, Deacon. I want you to write that down. He was 70 and 5 years old. Okay? He was 75 years old. He was 75 years old. Let me keep saying that. He was 75 years old. He was 75 years old. It doesn't matter how old you are. It matters that you follow the wisdom of God. God came to him and said, Get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy land. Go to a land that I will show you. Like I said in the beginning, Skipper, this is so simple because I want you to get it. Is that God has a plan for each of your life. But let me stop right here because I like to do a Bible study. How many hands in here know? And, and it's okay. Remember, no judgment zone. The scripture's right under. Judge not lest you be judged. I don't, I don't uh, judge people. I let the Bible judge them. I just open up the Bible. That's what the Bible says. Not my words. It's what the Bible says. But I want a show of hands. How many of you know what your purpose is? One. Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. So we go along to get along. Okay? Depression cannot bother you when you know what your purpose is. Let me just take a little side note here. Jesus knew. Wait a minute. Thank the Holy Spirit. How many of you believe Jesus is real? Okay. Amen. You're a little late there. We'll wait on you. <laughs> we'll wait on you. If you believe that, then why is it so hard for us? See, most churches, the preacher going to yell at you and you're like, yeah, that was a good sermon. No, I want you to think. I want you to be taught. I'm not trying to entertain you. I'm trying to get you to a spot so you can receive from God. I know my purpose. As Robert Lincoln Hearn, I know my purpose, but sometimes I fight against my purpose. How many show of hands of that? Amen. You know your purpose, but you fight against it. Because sometimes, sometimes your purpose don't seem to be going the way you want to go. Is that right? Thank you. Sometimes your purpose does not seem to be going the way you want to go. By now, by now, uh, I was talking to, I was talking to a teacher and, um, she was like, oh, wow, we're new here. And I said, well, you ought to come and join us. We're from the Midwest. I said, oh, I love this what Midwesters. They're just so bold and out, and out there. They just tell you what they think. You don't have, you don't walk away knowing. But Southerners be like, yeah, yeah. I think I like you. <laughs> People in the West are like, you know what? I don't like you. I don't like your mama. I don't like none of you. <laughs> and they just keep moving on. You know, some of us have that, you know. But anyway. So, 
When you know what your purpose is, then you can do what you have been called to do. See, Jesus knew he was to be born, to be crucified, and die. Period. He didn't try to set up home. That's why many, many scholars are like, well, Jesus had a thing with Mary. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. The Bible said he came in the flesh and he made the flesh obey the spirit of God. Lust. He said, I, he said, I am tempted just like you are, but I make the flesh obey the will of God. Now think about it. So, he says that I come to only do the will of the Father. You'll be so much happier. You would have been in uh, less detrimental relationships if you knew what your purpose was. Yeah. Well, I thought I thought he was going to be okay. I thought she was going to be okay. And then you all bruised and battered uh, emotionally, and you can't see the light of day. And that's what Satan wants you at, in that in-between so that you cannot follow the will of God. Now, now watch this. Abram heard the voice of God, left everything he knew. How many of you have left everything you knew? You left your mama. Because see, when I moved here to South Carolina, it was all about my mama went to this church, my daddy put the headstone, the, the cornerstone, and we going to die a Baptist and stay a Baptist. But what if God is telling you to do something different? I said, what if God is telling you to do something different? What worked for my mama don't necessarily work for me. How many of you know? Because my mama's perfect. My mama's perfect. My mama's perfect. Thank you. My mama's perfume. <laughs> my mama's purpose was to have 11 children and raise us and make sure, oh, and then you hear women, it was her purpose to have children. Well, I'm just saying, I'm only telling you what happened. Nobody tied it to the bed, God help us. That'll come to some of y'all later on. See, I never wanted to be like my parents. We all lived in the same house as 11 of us. I never, somebody say never. never. You ain't saying it loud enough. Somebody say never. never. I never wanted to be like my parents. We had two children, and I thought that was just fine. And when the third one came, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but we love them. Amen. Get that on camera. So. <laughs> she always said, you didn't want me. That ain't true. It was just a surprise. Surprise! The doctor said, Miss Horn, you were pregnant. You're like, no! <laughs> because we had all our children back to back. Every year she was pregnant for three years. Right. I know, right? No breather. Boom, boom. And I'm glad we did because all of them are one year old apart. And they all grew up together and it was great. And so now we in our uh, late, amen. amen, 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 amen. And we can still get around. <laughs> you should have them young so when you get our age, you can still, you know, go enjoy yourself. But that wasn't my purpose to have a lot of children. That was not my purpose. It may be your purpose. <laughs> And the women said amen. amen. Because it's hard on the women. The man just stand there and hold their hand and, and be like, it's going to be all right. Well, you take these pains and mirror you tell me if it's all right. The women should have said amen. Good Lord, I'm not saying. So Abraham, Abram, got out of his country. Read.
got to see this testimony. You do. I mean, you got to see this testimony. This, he told him, get out of your land, take your family, and leave. Now, if you are a Bible scholar or even know your way around the Bible, you know, now watch this. This is so crazy. God will give you a land that's already been tilled, already been taken care of, and give it to you. And we all understand that Canaan is the promised land. Do y'all the, the Bible believers, y'all know that? Yeah. Canaan is the land that God gave yeah. the Jews. Yeah. Okay? Now watch this. Just him and his wife and his nephew. went, traveled, came to Canaan, and God fed him. Now watch it. God didn't talk to him no more until he got to Canaan. See, that's the problem with us. God will tell us something, and then God will be quiet because he wants us to move forward and do it. But we think, God, are you there? Are you still there? Are you still there, God? God, what are you saying, God? What are you saying? I've already said what I said I was going to do. I already said what to do. All you have to do is follow it. Is anybody in a process right now that you believe you are hearing God say something, but you need more confirmation? You need more confirmation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me give you a, let me give you a little snapshot. Let me give you a little thank you, Holy Spirit. See, I want to teach you because this is most important. Now, I can scream and do all that humming and carrying on, but watch this. God told me, watch this, God told me to leave Louisville, Kentucky, and to come to South Carolina. I disobeyed God and stayed in Louisville for one more year. And we made God jump through hoops. And I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is obey him and the promise will come. Watch this. God, uh, I used to pray a lot. I'm very ashamed right now. And, and I can hear God calling me back to it. There wasn't a day that didn't go by that me and uh, Brother Terrence didn't pray. You remember that day? We went to the church every single day. It didn't matter where we was. We was like, Pastor, we got to go. And we, uh, I, I had a prayer partner, and we went and we prayed. Now, when you pray, it seemed like nothing happened. But you are bombarding heaven so that his will can be done on the earth. Because you are his will. And he's telling you to do something. Now, listen to me. So, Nate, I stayed a whole year. We, we started a church from the ground up. We had passed there eight years. The people loved us. We loved them. I mean, we, we bought our own church building, and uh, we had one more payment left. And I'm telling you, it's down the bottom. It's down the bottom. We have one more payment left before I turned it over to the, 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 the pastor and the church was paid for. Now, me being disobedient because all of my family lives there. My mom and dad was still alive. Everybody was there. And I just couldn't see myself leaving and going to South Carolina like the Lord told me. I didn't even know where that was. Where is South Carolina? Then I started looking it up and I said, oh my God, South Carolina is the place where they got the flag, the Confederate flag hanging over the state out. No, I can't go there, God. You know what? The Lord didn't say nothing else to me. And don't you know things started to uh, not work? What do you mean by that? No, we were still blessed. Our car would break down. We was on the bus line. I was still cleaning restaurants. See, here it's different. They don't have the mass transit like they do in big cities. I took the bus everywhere. I went check Brandon. I had my vacuum cleaner getting on the on the bus. <laughs> Y'all should see me struggling trying to get this thing on. I'm sitting with my hair. And they get cold in Louisville. You hear me? You hear what I'm telling you? Eight inches of snow. And I'm on the bus, and I'm thinking, Lord, what have I done? God, I'm a man of God, and I'm on the bus line. What is wrong? The Lord didn't say anything. 
because the Lord already told you what to do. That's a good spot to say amen. The Lord already told you what to do, but you're being hard-headed and you won't do it and you expect things to work out for your good. I didn't want to leave my mama. Daddy, I didn't want to leave my mama. I don't know why children are like that. They just uh, hold up their mama like, ah, uh, and daddy's down there like, here's your gift. <laughs> I know I'm a daddy You're like, oh, mama, oh, got all these wonderful gifts. I'm taking a commercial. Here, daddy, is a tie for you. <laughs> I got so many ties, I can tie my way from South Carolina to Louisville. I don't need one more tie. I want to buy the pass or something. I don't need one more tie. Some socks, amen. You can always use socks and bow ties. Listen, we stay. So I prayed again, Brandon. I said, God, if you want me to leave Louisville, let it be all right with my wife. Because, you know, women, it's just hard for them to uproot and just leave, you know, and leave all her family and leave everything she know. We didn't have to cook one Sunday, did we? We went to Mama's house every Sunday. I don't know about y'all. We went to Mama's house every Sunday and ate macaroni, cheese, green beans. You, you, I don't want to go back. I'm vegan. But listen, every Sunday, that's what we lived at on Sundays. And got upset when they went out to eat. What? Y'all didn't cook. <laughs> right? And Mother's Day, she better be in the kitchen. Now, we give you a gift, but you got to cook. <laughs> and I, so I finally obeyed God. And I'm telling you, what would my life be, our life be, if I would have obeyed God the first time? We came here, we have lived better than we have ever lived. Our son was in the third grade when we moved here. He's what, 25 now? 26? Not on drugs. Y'all seen the way Louisville is now? All the gangs? My daughters are not pregnant. What if you obey God? I'm just going to stop right there. What if you obey God? You think, I got this, I got this. What if you obey God? What if you obey God? What if you obey God? Let me come on up. What if you obey God? It don't mean you got to know somebody there. Well, that's not my religion. There's no religions in heaven. There's just obedient children. What if you obey God? What if my wife wouldn't obey God and married me? She would probably be broke down. <laughs> I said to her the other day, I said, what if you hadn't married me? She said, I'm pretty sure I would have made it. <laughs> pretty sure everything would have been all right. You, know? <laughs> you don't never know. This is a little touchy situation there. But I thank God. What if you will obey God? Listen to me. God. 12 30. What if you will obey God? Abram, get thee out of that country and get away from that land and go to a land where I will show you. And I will make your name great. Pick it up. Read.
I want you to think about this. However small, great, minuscule, whatever. I want you to think about this. I wouldn't know none of you if I had to obey God. I wouldn't know none of you if I hadn't obeyed God. Now what is your what if your obedience would do for somebody else? What will your obedience do for somebody else? Because it's not all about you. It's about what God can get through you and in you to help other people. Oh my God, I, I, I need somebody to listen. Yeah. What about your obedience? Well, I just don't want to do that. It's not about you. It's about what God is trying to accomplish in the earth, period. Jesus came and did what God wanted him to do, so now all of us can have a right to salvation because of what Jesus done. We can all say, I'm a father because of what Jesus done. Now I want to show you. It starts out real good. Now, skip over that. He's in the land. Alright, now go over to uh, Genesis 15 and 1. Real quick. Genesis 15 and 1. Uh-huh. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me? Seeing I go childless. Listen to this. So God already gave him the land. How many of y'all know we always want some more? Yes. How many of you know that we always want more than what God has given us? Yes. I, I, I gotta show you this. I gotta show you this so I can show you what happened. How many of you know we always want more and we can't settle for what God has for us? Go to a land and I'll show you and I'll make your nation great. Just stay right there. Alright? So Abraham, a friend of God, he can talk to God this way. God, what you gonna give me? Read. And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? Uh-huh. Now listen to this. See, when you read the word of God, you got to see. Watch this. Everybody look at me. Watch this. God came to him, told him to leave his family, leave his land. Go to a land, I'll show you. He gave him Canaan. Now watch this. Now, when he got there, he didn't have a house. Now, I need you to look at the word really, really in its, in its rarest form. In this chapter, he's telling God that his servant has children. I don't want you to miss that. He goes to a land, and now he has servants in his house. He goes to a land, he doesn't have anything, now he has a house, and he has servants. Now, do most of y'all know what servants are? Somebody lives in your house, they cook for you, they clean for you, all of that. But I must confess, I know this may shock some of you. When I was being raised, I had a nanny. Yeah. I know, I know you are probably very shocked. But I had a nanny. Her name was Miss Johnson. Imagine a woman that having this many children and daddy moved Miss Johnson in because he always liked to help people. And when mama came home from the hospital, she was sick because she was sick. And she 
gave me to Miss Johnson and she took care of me. And I remember when Daddy wanted to discipline me and I ran to Miss Johnson. She was old then. Older. And uh, Daddy said, he called her by name. We just knew it. And he said, move out of the way. I'm going to whoop his tail. And she stood between me and my father. Now, my father was probably about Brother Pastor Welch's size and height with a lot of strength. And he pushed her out of the way. He just kind of like just moved out of the way. And he beat me senseless. But one thing I realized was Miss Johnson can't help me. <laughs> if I decide to run again, if I decide to run again, it won't be to Miss Johnson. <laughs> it's going to be to somebody that can help me. And back in those and back in those days, it was no one to help you. So he has servants now, and I want you to see something. He's telling God, I don't have no children, though. But this man that lives in my house have children. Because in those days, it was a blessed thing to have children. You know why? So you can carry on your name. So you can carry on your name. Read. Watch this. And I'm going I'm to finish. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth Listen to this, because I'm going to close it here, and then I'm going I'm to I'm do some recap. Look towards heaven. Uh-huh. And tell, and tell the stars that thou be able to number them, and he said, unto him, so shall thy seed be. Verse 6. Now he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Verse 7. He said unto him, Stop right here. Listen. He asked God, how do I know this? God told him to give him a sacrifice. Our sacrifice today is us. The Bible says, present yourself as a living sacrifice. You need to give yourself as a living sacrifice. How many of you want to be in the will of God? Let me just ask that. How many of you want to be in the will of God? Okay. Because the will of God is perfect for your life. Now, now, Let's go over what you heard. God told him to get out of his land. He obeyed God. God brought him to Canaan. Gave him Canaan. Now, when you pick it up, he has a house and servants in his house. <clears throat> now he's having a conversation with God, not Jesus. He's having a conversation with God. And he says, I don't have no seed. Because it's very important for a man to leave behind his seed. Listen, so back in those days, it was very highly important for a Jewish family to have a boy. No slight against women, but when you have a woman child, they eventually going to get married, their name going to change, blah, 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 blah. When you have a man child, the man child's name stays the same. Now, we have met couples that actually kept their father's name. Have you ever met anybody like that? And they, they do it like this. They say, like if my daughter would get married, her name would be Kaylin Hearn. Then, but the Hearn would always be in the middle or on the end. And that's how they would write their new name. Because they, because
are certainly are only uh, the only child. So they want to carry on their father's name. But I said this to say this. He did everything God asked him to do. Now, somebody say what? Y'all with me? Somebody say what? what? All right. Turn over to Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16. And I want to show you something. We're talking about the wisdom of God and obeying God. Genesis chapter 16. Start at verse 1, please. Now, Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children. Now listen to this. I want to show you this. Uh-huh. Remember that Hagar, he was 75 years old, okay, he was 75 years old, okay, now look at Abraham, Abraham has servants, which were Egyptian people, you Bible scholars will say, wow, wow, because later on the Egyptian people puts them in what? Puts him in what? Bondage. But as a Jew right now, the Egyptian people are more slaves to the Jews. Hagar was an Egyptian woman that kept the house. Read, watch this. Stop right there. Do everybody know what that means? There's no children in there. Does everybody know what that means? Go into my maid. I mean, go in there and have sex. Now, what woman did... Okay. By and by, Lord. By and by. By and by. What woman you know that will tell her husband to go in and have sex with the maid if you have a maid? Hey, honey, I can't have no children. The maid looking pretty good. Now go on in there and take her and get us a child. How many of you women to go for that? I don't got no hands. Well, you know what they do nowadays? They call them surrogate mothers. What's the difference? Huh? Oh, <laughs> see, that, that's a big thing. She said they don't have sex now, so that's a big thing, right? You can take your seed, but I don't want, you know. Artificial simulation. Now, is that the way God made for children to come into the world? I just want y'all, come on. Is that, is that what God, is that how God ordered it for children to come into the world? By, oh. Yeah, that. Hey, yeah. No. Read, watch this. He hearkened to the voice of who? He hearkened to the voice of who? Sarah was who? Who should we obey? Well, y'all sound a little low. God. If my wife told me that, I was like, babe, this ain't right. But it would please me. This is not right. <laughs> now y'all all of us, this is not. Don't you know some relationships are open? Yes. They go 
out and get up. Oh, man. Do I have some adults in here in the name of Jesus? Do y'all know some relationships are open? And they go out and get other people to be in their bed. The Bible says the bed is, marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. That means only two people. Not a threesome, not a foursome. Husband and wife. Now, you can say, yeah, I, I hear people, I hear what you're saying in your mind. Yeah, just like a man. His wife said, go on. He should have stood up and been a man like, no, dear. Only want you, dear. And you know, it kills me when people go outside their marriage and like, it wasn't even fun. <laughs> I'll come to y'all later. But then why did you do it? What were you doing? What were you doing? So he hearkened to the voice of Sarai, and they had Ishmael, which is not the promised child, and today, that's why they have problems over in Israel. Y'all know all the bombs and stuff that are dropping? Uh, do y'all watch the news? Do you know the people that are fighting in Israel, don't you know their cousins? Did y'all know that? Uh, come on now. Did y'all know they were cousins? All because Abraham disobeyed God and God gave him everything that, that, that he needed and that he desired, but he couldn't wait on one thing God asked him to wait on? One thing. One thing. One thing God is asking us to do, and that is to serve him and only him. Nobody else. Nobody else. And that is why we have problems in the Middle East today because Abraham disobeyed God, listened to his wife, and got out of the will of God. And then when he listened to his wife, she wasn't satisfied. She was ready to kill the woman. Is that right? So it's better to listen to God than to obey man. Baby, we ain't got no money going in there and steal that formula. No, God will provide. Well, the baby's hungry. You must don't want your child to eat. You got to start doing like that, you know, to make, to make it believable, I guess. Start moving your body like that. You want me, you want me to steal? Yes. It's for our child. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Would you just start blessing God for the word that you heard?
Would you give him praise for the nourishment, the food that was just served to you from the throne room of heaven? Now we thank you for your instruction, your correction, your direction that came through your word today. Come on, somebody, thank him. For somebody, that was their word. That's exactly what they needed to hear. Hallelujah. One day, hmm, hallelujah, we would just get on one accord and bless the Lord. If you're under the sound of my voice right now and you do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, and you say that word I heard pricked my heart and it makes me want to give my life to the Lord. If you're in this room, would you please come? Amen. If you're online and you heard that word and that word pricked your heart and you're saying, I want to be a son of God. I want to be exactly where God wants me. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Say, dear God, come into my heart. I confess I am a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe you died and you rose on the third day just for me. I repent of every sin. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that simple prayer online, we want to hear from you. If you would email us at newstartministry072, we'll be glad to give you information and put some pamphlets in your hand to help you in your walk with the Lord. God bless you. For those of you that are remaining, would you grab the hand of your neighbor? Hallelujah. Find you a neighbor, Michelle. Find you a neighbor. That's right. Amen. We want to pray for souls, so if you would come out of your own mind and, and just begin to pray for souls, family members, co-workers, loved ones. Come on, begin to help me pray. Father, we lift up souls to you right now. We lift up every aunt, uncle, cousin, neighbor, brother, co-worker, friend, ex-friend. God, we pray now in Jesus' name that your salvation power would come to change the cycle of life that this person is facing. God, we bind all of hell and his imps that would come to lie to your people to tell them that they cannot have eternal life. Father, we claim it now. Change their direction. Set forth laborers, God, in Jesus' name, in their path to witness the good news of the gospel. Father, that they will hear your word and be saved. God, we lift up our mothers, God. We lift up our fathers. We lift up our sons and our daughters and our children, God, that they will not make hell their home. God, we cry loud and we spare not that every soul that's headed towards hell right now would be turned around in the name of Jesus. God, we plead your blood of protection over them. Protect them until they make the right decision. God, protect them until they come into their right mind. Keep them, oh God, from the hand of the enemy and every in every devil, every force of hell that would come to cause them, oh God, eternal destruction. And so, God, we thank you now for what you're doing in the atmosphere, in the minds of your people. Holy Spirit, go forth and arrest those that do not know you. Arrest those who have not given their heart to you, God. We call it done in the name of Jesus. Now begin to praise him. Come on, lift up a praise in this house for souls. We thank you for souls, God. We thank you for souls, Lord. We thank you for souls. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that they're coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God. We thank you, oh God, that souls are pulled out of darkness into light in Jesus' mighty name.